Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's All Go to the Trailers. Did I get it right? That's the first time, yeah. That's For video games specifically. Do we, do we want Let's All Go to the Game Trailers to be specific? No, because we, we don't want to mislead people. There's no video that isn't about video games on our site. Sometimes there is. Yeah, you're right. Your show pushes it every now and then. <laughs> Stop it. Have um, you guys seen the user movies? I, I got, uh, I am West. Brandon Jones, uh, and with me is Mr. Kyle Bosman. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Ryan Stevens. Howdy. And we're back for another week to watch game trailers. Uh, we're not going to break the stride. We're just going to jump right into it and uh, kick it off with something that we actually got the day that we recorded the last episode uh, and uh, didn't put it up until Monday. But uh, this is Darkest Dungeon, and uh, I'm a big fan. I can go on and on about this, but Ryan, you you pointed this out to me. Yeah, this was a. Uh, and it's funny. This was one of the first games that we talked about back in Invisible Walls when we kind of had the little trailer talk. Um, everything about this fits into like my my inner cookie cutter that is Ryan. Uh, there's like overwrought language, alliteration, awesome animatics thick pencil lines, and then they show gameplay, and I think it all looks intriguing, and I like how this is basically just like a fancy animatic tied together with, uh, you know, a couple parallax effects and, you know, a really kind of wrought narrator. And I think this is actually the part, uh, his voice out almost cracks a little bit, where you almost can hear his kind of energy seep out. And it's a little melodramatic towards the end, but like everything about this is just me like chanting, yes, yes, yes. I think it is extremely melodramatic throughout. I, but which which I wonder is if it's intentional. Like, I mean, I like wonder... the gun click. Well, right. Yeah. But I mean, him in the beginning, though, he kind of, you know, his voice gets a little, you know, much. Yeah, like You should it, do it, a sound up, actually. You should, we should hear his voice for a second, because it is a, it's a funny accent, even. Yeah. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. Specifically, just how into it he is. Like, I wonder, it's one thing like to get a guy that sounds like that, and it's another thing to get a guy that sounds like that who also does a voice on top of it. That's one of the uh, <laughs> Kickstarter uh, tiers. If you give him enough money, they'll, the narrator will say a sentence for you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and, and again, we talked about this last week a little bit, but I like the zooms and the tilts on the gameplay so it's not just static, you know, we're not, we're not just staring at it, uh, you know, full frame the whole time. It kind of helps uh, make it a little more emotional, even though we know the game probably won't. It'll be jarring if it was actually played like that. Did you catch the Arrested Development Easter egg? No. Uh, in the beginning of the gameplay, there's a character named uh, Job, and he clicks on something and he says, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> Well, the, but that fits kind of in. out of tone for the but game. But that fits. I need to watch more of that show. But that fits in, I think, with the aesthetic, though. I think that's uh, fairly invisible. And I, I think there was a great build-up to gameplay. I think it was by the time we finally saw gameplay, um, I thought that you know the cinemas we saw in the beginning, it was the same art style. You know, they didn't do like an elaborate CG cutscene or something. I think it all fits uh, into the aesthetic. I also like how it has that. Uh, it does that kind of uh, montage shot where the the party becomes less and less people. And it talks to the game mechanics of people going insane and turning on each other and stuff. Without being explicit about it, it kind of represents it with the gameplay and the narration. And I think that's a pretty good job. Does a pretty good job. Any thoughts, Kyle? Uh, yeah, I like it a ton. I really, really like this trailer. And kind of how we covered last week, I'm excited when a trailer is willing to show its gameplay straight. Like it's showing us what the menus look like and, you know, uh, what a typical little battle might be like. And, uh... Oh, so much context. I really like this showing you where this game is and the world it takes place in. Uh, this does everything a good trailer should, really. I also kind of got a, an internal darkness vibe from this. Like, kind of like the one house and everything underneath it. I always like that stuff. If you've ever seen House 2, it's a good good B movie. But Is that the one with Greatest American Hero? I, it has the guy from Cheers. Uh, Cliff from Cheers is in it. It's like is, is an like, electrician. Yeah, isn't there like a big fat woman who gets her hand cut off and like the hand is like the reoccurring gag throughout the movie. He's got to like remember. hide the hand and like the dog like digs it up out of the yard and comes in with the hand. Could be. And it's like a giant nailed and crazy. Okay. I hope it is. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, uh, it's funny to mention that, Ryan. I'm, I'm way into gothic horror and uh, Lovecraft and, and all this stuff. I think this is definitely playing towards a very specific aesthetic. Like, I don't know if, it, they don't really specifically say Mouth of Madness or or, or uh, no, but that it, looks like a little myth or it looks like a little Cthulhu guy, uh, like on that pace, you know, little octopus guy. Uh, and if anyone's been reading uh, Lock and Key, just finished, but that was Stephen King's son's comic book, where it's like every, the whole house is not like so much haunted, but just like hmm, portals to other worlds and stuff. Oh, it kind of gets that cool idea. His poor children. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what else can they do? They got to work their nightmares out, you know, yeah. some way. In comic um, books. 
I also think this is a great example of how to sell a an independent, you know, less than uh, a game that's not super actiony that doesn't have a lot of cinemas you can already cut with. Like it was obviously kind of an uphill battle trying to sell this to people, even though it's just like a side-scrolling RPG. And I think this trailer suggests that it's a little more than you would first look at just from screenshots. I think they did a good job uh, selling it, even though. I think it's just a little bit cheesy, which is why I'd give it a 7.8 at the end of the day. Um, I wish that, I think if they either have been a little more obvious with the cheese or toned down the cheese, I'm not sure. I think the guy's just a little too, a little too much Parmesan for me. 9.2 I'm willing to give this game. I think it's a, I'd say that's an intentional cheese. I think if they have a character named Job who says I've made a huge mistake, they're, they're showing there's a little lightness to the darkest dungeon. I just uh, want to be more critical because I'm always really happy about trailers yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you guys uh, crap on them, so we're like, going backwards this week. Like 9.5, like everything, I've watched this like 14 times, and even though there's nothing super crazy, it's just so well put together and gets me so excited. And it's funny because you say cheese, and I would say it's kind of on uh, it's kind of on the side of what I'd call camp, where it's really earnest, but it's kind of self-aware at the same time, uh, which I think a lot of video games do, but it, this way it's also a little more serious, and I think camp can also be serious. This is true. Yeah. Um, I just Except yeah. Summer camp. It just sometimes aesthetically, I like to really put my finger on like what exactly am I watching? Is it, is a joke being made to me, or am I supposed to take this seriously? Especially when we're grading stuff. Um, okay, moving on. Not to uh, throw retrospectives in the show whenever somebody makes one, but uh, <laughs> this came out what today? I think uh, we're recording this on uh, Thursday, um, and this is a retrospective of Strider, uh, done uh, in the style of the uh, the classic GT retrospective, which. Uh, um, or now as old as uh, the games that we originally did them on. <laughs> um, but uh, what, what do you think? Uh, any any love for Strider, Kyle Bosman? Uh, never played any of these Strider games, so this actually was educational for me. I like it's kind of casual, uh, the way this person's willing to speak to us and everything. Um, definitely, it's definitely a, a weird video to put out to promote the new Strider, because I, I it's... It's like ordered in a weird way, because um, first he like shows you the three main Strider games, and then it's like Strider went on to be a great success. But then here's like a bunch of other weird information about him. Did you, did you get the same feeling watching through this thing? Well, that's that's was kind of the difficult part about retrospectives is like where do you start? Like how do you structure the the script? You know, yeah. like how much time do you spend on each game? Uh, what's really the relevant information that you want to get to? Like if you wanted to, you could make a you know three hour episode on just one game. Like there's so much to talk about. Uh, I thought this was great. Uh, I, I really respect Strider, and I think it's a weird kind of thing to do a retrospective because it's not really a story based. It's I always thought this uh, the first game in particular is kind of more of a like a tableau. It's like it's like a single idea. It's like the flavor text on the magic card. Like you know you'll never leave your Asia alive. Like what's your Asia? I want to know more about it. But all you really know is you're going around and you're killing a lot of weird dudes and you have a crazy weapon. Um, Strider was always one of those games that you'd like. I, I think if you had infinite quarters, you'd realize it's a like a 14 minute game in the arcades. And then the the home version as you can see, weren't exactly the same. But I do remember the Genesis version, which I've never got to play, it was heavily advertised as being like the first eight megabit cartridge and stuff like that. So it kind of has its place in history. And he does have all of this weird side stuff that he's been in. Like obviously the Marvel vs. Capcom is probably the, the biggest deal. But to, to Kyle's point, yeah, I, I think it is a game that has settings way more important than story and I think that does kind of sometimes becomes like a missed connection when you do something like a retrospective which you kind of plan and plotting things together so it feels a little threadbare in that way and I, I like he criticizes the the PlayStation 2 game called Strider 2 which is clearly just a remake of the arcade game <laughs> it's like it's not without its criticisms this video which is nice one thing that I think is nice about this, and we've dealt with this, Ryan, in, in talking to, uh, we won't name names, of course, but dealing with clients when uh, a game is coming out that they're always really hesitant to bring up the past. Like, you know, we always come, you know, pe people are like, oh, we'd love to do a retrospective or some kind of history piece on your game. And they're like, eh, we really want to focus on the, on the new game. You know, we don't want it, people to make comparisons between our old stuff. So we really don't want to, like, dig up the past. We really want to focus on this hot new product that we have. And so it's cool to see Capcom, who people really enjoy when Capcom revisits its history. History and, and respects its history yeah. to make a video like this. So, so Brandon's kind of uh, peeling back the, uh, showing how the sausage is made a little bit, but you know, like any video game site, we go after exclusives and you know, some horse trading for coverage and we love old games. Everyone at GT loves retrospectives. Uh, they are a huge time sink though. Um, but between this and the the Final Fantasy thing, man, like these, these guys are doing some cool stuff. Obviously Capcom is Capcom Unity, which is a great community. 
uh, that they support, and it's great to see stuff like this coming out. Well, with stuff like PlayStation Now and and you know the uh, getting uh, an accessibility to old games not through you know uh, illegal means, but through actually like you know get, get buying these Legitimate. games, you know, you know buying these games again and owning them digitally, that there's this kind of resurgence of information about like what is Strider, you know, what is when did Mega Man first come out, you know, how long has it been since Final Fantasy first launched? Um, so I, I love that stuff. I love digging in because I didn't know everything when I did retros. I you know, 90% of the information that I wrote down on the page in each retro episode was like, I didn't know that before I, you know, discovered it uh, today. So, I love this stuff. And then, of course, you know, we wrap up with the, the new game. And a great scarf. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, back, like, it's weird to just show his little cameos and then say, and now look where he is. Do you know what I mean? I feel like because uh, it's a marketing tool. In You're the right. end, it's a marketing yeah, tool. Yeah, it's not a retro. Like I wouldn't, I would yeah, not yeah, have exactly. made a retro of Strider because right. it's like, what do you? What's the story? You know, what's the arc? Yeah. Um, and that um, a lot of people have come at me with retro ideas. I think Sonic was one that we heard over and over. And it was like, well, where do we end? What's the story? You know, where do you do? What's that last episode? Uh, we show the new crazy weird Knuckles guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> what's it called now? Sonic Boom. Yeah. But it's always, got, like, I always like when, like, Tomb Raider was perfect, because it was totally reinventing itself, so it was the perfect time to do that. But, um, yeah, I only played the uh, the Genesis version, so I don't really have a history with Strider. But um, I think it was about, uh, how long is this, about six minutes? Do we think that's long enough to, uh, that's about a third of your average GT retrospective episode. <laughs> and they managed to wrap up the whole thing uh, in one episode. Um, You're like, nice try, kid. I, I think they did a good job. I don't know if Strider necessarily earns it. I'll give him a seven. Uh, Mr. Bosman, what do you think of uh, the Strider retrospective? I can't watch a retrospective without the voice of Brandon Jones. I give this a 2. I give your score that you just gave a 10. Uh, Ryan Stevens. I'm giving this an alphanumeric value of D8 for date, as in dated. Uh, it's it's fun, uh, but it and I like the guy's kind of casual tone. He says some kind of... Goofy do, stuff. do we know this guy? Is this a guy? It's probably He's a dude from Capcom. He's definitely a guy. Yeah. Not they, does sure. he do videos for Capcom? Like, I don't just go to a Capcom site and watch stuff. I don't know. Yeah. It's just terrible for me to say. I should be like, I love that guy. It's that guy. Yeah, you did a good job, guy. I'm sorry we don't know your. What if his name's name, Guy? <laughs> well, Gee. We're wrapping I'll it up. Say. Wrapping it up with a short one, but I, I uh, really wanted to put this one trailer in here because I thought this was interesting. Uh, it's too bad we don't have Daniel Bloodworth on the show. Uh, he can maybe tell us a little bit more about World of Speed, but it had its debut trailer. And um, I don't know a thing about this game. It, I thought it was really weird. This is an MMO, right? Or some kind of like an open world yeah, yeah. multiplayer racing game that I'm sure has some cool mechanics that they want to let people know about. And there's no text in this trailer other than the introduction at the very beginning. So I don't know what this game is about. It just looks like another racing game. And for a debut trailer, I think that's kind of swing and miss. I guess they're <laughs> expecting people to see it with context of like a press release or in a blog post or something like that. But I think you're right. If people are sharing this stuff, I mean, you go to our game page and like yeah. that, that's it. You go to if they had a YouTube channel, like that's it. This is the only video you mm -hmm. have. No, exactly. Um, and I just think uh, you know, right out of the gate, you need to do something a little bit more. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, it's and, pretty. Um, uh, certainly, but. if it, there's a huge multiplayer aspect to it, I think it's awesome that they pulled it off, um, uh, looking this good. But uh, yeah, it's like locations. Okay, just, everything just seems really cookie cutter racing game. Kyle. You feeling this? Well, so like I kind of cheated and I talked to Daniel Bloodworth about what this is because I was I was curious. Subtext. <laughs> yeah. And so what it is, it, it is an MMO. It's an MMO racing game. Uh, and basically it's from the team who's doing Project Cars, which is like the community developed racing game. And it's just like uh, this Russian company came to them and said, hey, would you make this game, please? And they said, OK. Uh, so like basically they're doing this to fund their passion project. Uh, they're kind of just dumping out this weird MMO game. Uh, Team-based racing, basically. Kind of like uh, the two new next-gen racing games. Drive Club. And Drive Club and... Uh, that other one? Yeah. Shoot, what is the other one? The something. The Crew. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Sorry. And, and, it's not yeah. that bad. So it actually, just hasn't done Both fun. those games, uh, good trailers that where you get you get the idea of, like, oh, okay, this is a team-based racing game. I, I understand. This is just, like, look at our cool graphics. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? And you don't necessarily have to like bog us down with text. Like even that car, little car slide, and, and all of a sudden I see it in a garage. I'm thinking like, oh, I can own this, or maybe well, I'm in that garage. Or the trailer voice guy goes like, the future of MMO racing is here. Yeah, I don't want that. I want again, kind of <laughs> what, what we were talking about with uh, Thief. It's nice to have just like a little context, you know, a little bit of, of information. Um, even maybe just some some quick titles at the end that just kind of like you know uh, go through all the list all the features and everything. But um, yeah, again, just uh, I think it's the first debut trailer that we've had on the show. Um, 
and uh, I think um, they need a little more info. Just I don't know, to, it's so sad. But is that it, a teaser then? It does look beautiful, this thing looks great, and it just has no impact. Do you know this is like a great looking game, but at the end of the day it's not memorable to anyone, which is really bums me out. This is where we are today. Well, I think it's uh, part of it's like it's real realism, right? And it's mm -hmm. realism without real character. I know they showed that one shot of the guy in the car, but I mean, we're used to looking at pretty cars, you know, yeah. in games, you know. Even with the next gen stuff versus the last gen stuff, it's I think it's less, less impactful. So I give it a 5, my lowest score yet on the show. Kyle Bosman. That's your lowest score yet, huh? Yeah. Uh it's still pretty. You're saying this is an average trailer. And it's a fun cut. You know, Five they, is they, never average. They did little, uh, <laughs> you know, you got little wipes here and little moves and little, you know, picture-in-picture -picture stuff. And, you know, it's not just like a, a, an edit, you know, like I couldn't have done this in a day. This this took a while. Oh, uh, There's definitely effort in the edit, but I, I think uh, as, as the purpose of this trailer, you know, you got to think of like what a trailer is for and what it's meant to do. Uh, it fails in every aspect. So I give this a 2.5. I give it a 23 skidoo. Uh, Mr. Bosman, that we have you here, is there anything that we missed from Nintendo Direct? <laughs> uh, we didn't mention that, and that happened today. Yeah. yeah. Any, any trailers? You gotta know, I was so hyped all yesterday, all today, looking forward to this Nintendo Direct, and what I do is I get too hyped. So, good trailers, no huge announcements is the thing. Uh, Little Mac has a cool trailer. Um, kind of budget, actually. Real budget trailer. Like, uh, Rosalina gets this huge intro video to her character, and then clearly they ran out of CG budget because they got this weird kind of... I don't know, I felt like they were trying to match the next level game aesthetic while Rosalina was trying to be kind of, like, wrapped up into, like, the Mario 3D-ness. I... It's the only reveal trailer they've had so far with weird 2D art like that. Okay. I just felt like, I mean, obviously, the Wii version wasn't... The Wii Punch-Out wasn't 2D, but it kind of had a 2D kind of sheen to it. I don't know, man. You should watch that again. <laughs> you should see that stuff. It looks great. No, yeah, I thought it kind of reflected on that, though. I don't know. I think they didn't have a great trailer budget, so it's like, let's put out this 2D thing for but you. But you notice stuff like that, so it's worth it's worth saying. You know, get get the get the word out there that you, you won't stand for that kind of subpar animation. Nintendo's out of money. Well, no. Spend, <laughs> it, spend it on your game. Don't spend it on your trailer. I'm okay with that, I guess. Also this week, I like the Humanity trailer for Dying Light. Uh, I'm pumped for that game. I liked uh, Dead Island. Um, I didn't get to play the expansion, uh, but... Uh, I love that game. I played this at E3, and uh, I think it's fun. Obviously, a lot of work went in. Very careful selection of the shots. Um, and uh, definitely a week to talk about Evolve. Um, we got the new trailer for Evolve. Uh, and, of course, we've talked about that at length on different GT shows. We won't get into that here, but if you haven't seen it, uh, it is called the Happy Hunting trailer, and definitely check it out. And thank you, Mr. Ryan Stevens, and thank you, Mr. Bosman, uh, for joining us again. And uh, watch Dem Trailers. We'll see you guys next week.